Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> good afternoon, welcome. Welcome to our uh, group meeting. First, let me begin by thanking our members, uh, Pirko and Teuvo, and the Finns party for the warm uh, welcome and uh, <clears throat> organizing the ECR bureau meeting in the first city of Helsinki. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here again, I should say. And uh, I'm very pleased that you decided uh, to rejoin the ECR group. Together we can find for a European Union that gets back to basics to deliver common sense solutions. For the European Union that delivers added value for hard working taxpayers across the Union. And I am delighted that we find common ground in this approach. And the European Union should only get responsibilities if this creates an added value for the member states and its citizens. Brussels, let me emphasize it as strongly as I can, Brussels cannot decide how countries should deal with matters of national concern, nor is there any need for a treaty change centralizing more power in the Commission. Throughout the mandate, it became clear that the ECR group is a force to be reckoned with. Not only in the European Parliament are we getting stronger, ECR parties also join government in Finland, Italy, and Czech Republic. In Sweden, it wouldn't have been possible for, to form a government without the support of the Swedish Democrats. We see also we see uh, uh, a shift to the right in many uh, countries in the European Union. But the work is far from over. We are still facing many challenges when it comes to the future of the European Union. The momentum for a new vision for Europe is now. It is our time to convince voters about what we stand for and to come back in bigger, bigger numbers for the next legislation. It is the time to make our voices heard and to work towards a new with respect for its member states. Uh, that saying, uh, Your Excellency, Deputy Prime Minister, Pirko, colleagues, once again, thank you for joining us in facing this challenge. And I'm looking forward uh, to the interesting working sessions in the upcoming days. I would like to start with giving the floor to uh, Pirko, leader of the Finnish delegation in the ECR group. Kiitoksia. Omasta puolestani haluan toivottaa kaikki lämpimästi tervetulleeksi Helsinkiin. Mukava nähdä teistä niin monia täällä. ECR-kokous on viimeksi järjestetty Suomessa noin kymmenen vuotta sitten. Ehkä jotkut teistä olivat silloin paikalla. Kuinka moni on käynyt Helsingissä aikaisemmin? Go ahead. Uh. Interpretation isn't working. Oh, really? I, I don't know. Okay. Is it working? No. I need a bike. ECR-kokous on viimeksi järjestetty Suomessa noin kymmenen vuotta sitten. Ehkä jotkut teistä olivat silloin paikalla. Kuinka moni teistä on Helsingissä okay. 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 ensimmäistä kertaa? Käsi ylös. No, aika moni on käynyt Helsingissä. Joo, hienoa. 
Ohjelmassamme on neljä keskustelupaneelia, johon olemme saaneet arvovaltaisia puhujavieraita. Tänään kuulemme alustuksia Suomelle erityisen tärkeästä metsäpolitiikasta, ydinvoimasta ja pienydinvoimasta sekä EUn tulevaisuudesta, perussopimusten uudistamisesta ja EUn mahdollisesta laajentumisesta. Huomenna keskustelemme arvaamattoman itänaapurin kanssa elämisestä, turvallisuustilanteesta EUn pisimmällä, 1340 kilometrin mittaisella itärajalla ja tarpeesta nostaa puolustuskapasiteettia aikana, jolloin Venäjä käy brutaalia hyökkäyssotaansa Ukrainaa vastaan jo kolmatta vuotta. On tärkeää, että vankkumaton tukemme Ukrainalle ja sen kansalle jatkuu vahvana. Vierailemme myös Suomen parlamentissa eli eduskunnassa, jossa meidät ottaa vastaan puhemies Jussi Hallaho, jonka osa teistä tuntee viime kaudelta hänen ollessaan meppinä ECR-ryhmässä. Vierailemme myös Merihan väestösuojassa, jossa tutustumme väestönsuojelun Helsingissä sekä kuulemme kaupungin roolista osana Suomen kokonaisvarautumista. Kokoustamme täällä Helsingissä, kun europarlamenttivaaleihin on enää kolme kuukautta aikaa. Jos ennusteisiin on uskominen, tulemme ryhmänä pärjäämään hyvin. Samoin oma puolueeni, perussuomalaiset, on nosteessa. Presidentin vaaleissa ehdokkaamme eduskunnan puhemies Jussi Hallaho sai historiallisen hyvän 19 prosentin kannatuksen. Kansalaiset luottavat meihin. On tärkeää, että jatkamme samalla järkilinjalla kuin tähän asti ja pidämme kiinni Prahan julistuksen periaatteista. Ukrainan tukea on jatkettava, ilmastopolitiikkaa on järkevöitettävä, maahanmuuttoa on hallittava. Meidän on puolustettava kansallisvaltioiden suvereenisuutta ja vastustettava pyrkimyksiä kehittää EUsta liittovaltio tai supervalta. Tässä on avaimet hyvään vaalitulokseen. Haluan vielä kerran toivottaa teidät tervetulleeksi Helsinkiin. Toivottavasti kokousmatkan ohjelma on teille antoisa. Seuraavaksi annan puheenvuoron perussuomalaisen puolueen puheenjohtajalle, Suomen varapääministerille ja valtiovarainministeri Riikka Purralle. Riikka, ole hyvä. Kiitoksia, Pirkko. I'm going to speak in English. So, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself and the Finnish party, I wish you a warm welcome to Helsinki, to the ECR Bureau of Meeting. As we are now in the northernmost EU member country, the weather might be a bit chilly for, for some attendance, but I hope the contents of this meeting will, will compensate. These first spring sun rays make us Finns very happy. And uh, to be honest, for us it is almost summer now, when the sun is out and the darkness has stepped aside. But officially, let me start uh, by giving a short overview of the current political situation in Finland. The Finns party has been part of a center-right government composed of four parties since last June. In the cabinet, I serve as Minister of Finance and Deputy Prime Minister. In total, our party has seven ministerial portfolios in the government. Our government program uh, is the most ambitious program in decades, especially when it comes to fiscal and economic policy structural reforms, and migration policy. In Finland, we have experienced a negligible economic growth since the financial crisis, and the competitiveness of our economy has collapsed, especially in comparison to the Nordic states. This has led to a massive growth of public debt to the level of nearly 80% of GDP. The aim of this government is to cut public spending and introduce wide-ranging reforms in the labor market and social security 
in order to stabilize the debt ratio by the end of this government period, by 2027. Besides the ambitious measures taken in a government program, we are currently negotiating additional measures of consolidation. It goes without saying that this is politically very difficult, like a government negotiations volume two. But it needs to be done, and my party finds it necessary that we stay committed. In migration policy, the government is implementing a paradigm shift, which means that, for instance, the rules for family reunification, permanent residence permit, citizenship, and granting international protection will be tightened significantly. Not anymore will Finland be the Nordic country with a liberal migration policy. As you might know, Russia has started a hybrid operation on our eastern border by instrumentalizing migrants seeking asylum in Finland. The government's answer to this hybrid attack has been swift and decisive. All the border crossing points on the eastern border have been closed since December and the government is in process of introducing legislation which will help us to deter the illegal entry of third country nationals at our land border. This is absolutely vital since the improvement of the weather conditions after winter makes it possible that Russia will try to send illegal migrants to Finland through other routes than official border crossing points. For us, this is a question of national security. While protecting ourselves and our country, we are protecting the EU and its, and its external border. This should be a vital issue for all member states of the Union. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's European elections will be the most important in a generation. We have, of course, heard this said before, but in this year's election there is a real chance to break the left-wing liberal domination of the EU Parliament. Especially when it comes to climate and migration policy, Europe is in dire need of new political solutions. Europe cannot and shall not be a green island in a dirty world or a reception center for all the needy people in developing countries searching for better living standards. In recent years, we have experienced very positive election results, for example, in Italy, Sweden, and in Finland. This has led to the formation of conservative center-right governments in these countries, which not only has had a positive impact on the interior policy, but at the EU level too. In future, I'm sure that we will see even more ECR parties, either in government responsibility or as support parties of the government. All the opinion polls at the moment show that the ECR group will grow in size compared to the 2019 elections. Our aim should be very ambitious, that is, to achieve the status of the third largest group in the parliament. Then ECR would be in the position to influence the legislative process in parliament, which for far too long has had a great imprint from the alliance of socialists and left-wing liberal groups. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say a few words of the priorities of my own, own party, the Finns party, for the upcoming European legislative process, legislative period, sorry. 
Um, we are in process of finalizing our EU policy manifesto, which will be published later in the spring. Since we are in Finland, let me continue by saying a few words about Russia and EU-Russia relations. In the opinion of the Finns party, there can be no ifs or buts how Europe is responding to the Russian threat. Since February 2022, our eastern neighbor has waged a brutal war of conquest and destruction in Ukraine. The savagery and the total lack of respect for basic human rights by the Russian forces has shocked the whole world. Despite this horror, there are popular political movements and statesmen, even in Europe, who want to ignore the Russian menace and restore the political and economic relations between Europe and Russia back to the situation they were before the war in Ukraine. We think that the ECR cannot compromise on the policy towards Russia just for the sake of getting new member parties to the group. The Russification of the foreign policy line of the ECR would mean losing an integral part of its identity. As it is stated in the Prague Declaration of the ECR Group, transatlantic security relationship in a revitalized NATO has an overriding value. After the migrant crisis in 2015, several European countries introduced wide-ranging reforms in migration policy in order to restrict the inflow of people seeking asylum. Among the EU member states, especially Denmark, has been exemplary in this regard. In recent years, the political trend in Europe has been towards to the goal of outsourcing the processing of asylum applications to a safe country outside the EU. We think that during the next EP period, it's essential to continue to reform the European asylum policy in an ambitious way, which would allow the member states to push for so-called so -called Rwanda model. The international treaties concerning refugees and asy asylum seekers, which were drafted right after the Second World War, aren't any more up to date and hinder effective measures in controlling the illegal migratory movements towards Europe. When these treaties were drafted upon, it was never the purpose to promote mass movements of people from one continent to another. Recent migrant riots in many Western European major cities show that the social peace of the old continent is at a tipping point. Not to speak of other profound problems, for instance, economic and fiscal. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately in recent years, the so-called Green Deal has been hampered has been hampered the possibilities of European industry and agriculture. After the European elections, it is vital that the EU legislation on climate policy will be modified heavily. The EU cannot act as if it can alone solve the climate change. Europe's share of the worldwide emissions is 9% at the moment, while China produces annually more emissions than the USA and European Union combined. If we, co if we continue along this same path on climate policy, the end result will be that the remaining industry in Europe will be relocated to China and other parts of Asia, and they will just increase the global emission levels. 
Another important aspect in climate policy is how we view the European agricultural sector. In the world with increased geopolitical tensions, it would be a political suicide for Europe to force our farmers out of business with unrealistic emission goals. We have to do quite the opposite, that is roll back regulation that have weakened the competitive position of the European agricultural sector. This is also a question of security of supply. For us Finns, a specific goal is that the European Commission steps back and lets us have the full control of our own forests. No faceless bureaucrat in Brussels has a better knowledge how we should use our forests in Finland. Nor has Finland any, any responsibility to let our forests be used as carbon sinks for the rest of the continent. We will do our share in the European climate policy and more, in fact, but we are not ready to compensate other countries perhaps less ambitious emission reduction goals. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for, for your interest and uh, once again I wish you a pleasant stay in the beautiful capital of Helsinki and uh, I hope the many presentations and debates in this meeting will give you new ideas and uh, inspiration for, for the upcoming very important EU elections. Thank you so much.